the sweet taste of nostalgia. It's a seductive liar that shaves off the rough edges of the past. And like someone once said, I don't like nostalgia unless it's mine. Is there a secret poison in your church that's keeping you from doing what you feel like God is calling you to do? Today on the Sunday Vlog, I'm talking all about nostalgia. Are you caught in the trap of instead of rose-colored glasses, looking through things with stained glass colored glasses? You know, oftentimes we think that things were greater in the past. Why can't things be like they used to? And maybe God's calling us to do a new thing. So welcome back to the Sunday Vlog. Let's get things fired up. It's going to be a great day. Brett, remember the good old days when ProPresenter didn't have 900 features and it, it just worked every Sunday? Man, why can't things be like they used to? We are rocking the beta version though today, you know, with the big subscription change. We tested it out on Wednesday and it seems like everything's working okay. Uh, we'll report back later. Last week it crashed. First time in a long time. But uh, cross our fingers, say our prayers. It's not going to happen today. That may be a problem. Hey, Brett, do you think 110 degrees is too hot for the baptistry? <laughs> the new cover we've got really works well. But even this baptistry could be a point of nostalgia for people. You know, the first time that we started using a baptistry on stage instead of the baptistry that was up there, I'll show you behind the scenes. You know, I got some pushback, and I think mainly that was because it wasn't the traditional thing. People that had maybe been baptized in the other baptistry just have that core memory, and it's like, you're taking that away? So, nostalgia plays a part in every decision. So if you're new to the channel, we have a couple of different services here, 9.30 and 11, both modern, getting ready for our 8.30 rehearsal. We'll make sure everything's good to go. I'm going to run out to my truck and get a new little device that we're going to use to help out our pastor in an emergency. Let me go grab that. So the idea here is that we have a little light that is back here and up at the front booth that when this doorbell is pushed on the back of the TV that we're going to mount there, it lights up to show Brett like, hey, something's wrong because we've had an issue where our teleprompter TV was not powered on and we had no way of knowing. The team is arriving. We got a couple minutes till we're gonna get started with rehearsal and then roll into our first service. I'll talk to you guys more about nostalgia in a minute. From an empty cup, amen when there's not enough. You're hear me say it again, amen. From the wilderness, amen. From the lion's den, amen when there's not enough. God hear me say it again, amen. All right, first service went great. Band played great. Really minimal tech issues. Let's talk about this idea of nostalgia. I mean, naturally, we're going to have some probably fond memories of when we first came to Jesus, when we first started experiencing the church. Maybe you grew up in church, maybe you didn't. And that's okay. Like for me, any time that Sweet Me Away from Charlie Hall comes on or I run across it, it's going to just take me back to that moment at Super Summer 2002 in the OBU Chapel, raising my hands for the first time, and it just has this connection in my spirit, right? And that's a good thing. But the problem, I think, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in the comments, is like when we let those precious memories keep us from making new ones. It's easy in ministry to become risk averse because you don't want to rock the boat or mess up something that like God's already done at your church. I just think it's important to remember what God has done, honor it, but also be ready for God to do something new. So I don't think it's a problem to solve. It's a tension to manage in our church. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? You know, while some memories anchor us, others may hinder us. But then there's other areas of scripture where people build an altar to remember what God has done. They don't live at that altar and stay there forever. 
but it's good to come back and visit and remember God's work. So like today, we, we pulled out an old hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him all around. And Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, And that's like an anchor for a lot of people, right? And they can sing that as a prayer to God. But we did three other new songs that say a similar thing in a fresh new way. And hopefully it connected with different people's hearts across the room in unique ways. So what is a song that takes you back? Like when you hear it, it's like, ah, that just feels right. You know, for us old folks, it's probably some Chris Tomlin song or Charlie Hall or something like that for you young guys. Maybe it's Reckless Love. So yeah, drop that in the comments. Let's get nostalgic together. All right, I've got some final thoughts. That's all this is. This is not Ryland's personal platform to spout theology, but just to think together about this idea because it's something I've been considering. So maybe after second service, I'll circle back and kind of give you my wrap-up thoughts about nostalgia. Got to listen back to first service, make some tweaks, and get ready to do the live stream. It's going to be a good day because BoxCast is going to work. All right, Rob's running sound today. Michael's playing guitar. Dad on the drums. What song takes you back to the good old days in worship, like the days of your youth? Is there a song that Pass comes up? On. Pass it on. Okay, I don't know that one. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Oh, yeah. Let's ask some 20-year-olds. We're talking about nostalgia in worship. Like, what's a song that takes you back to the good old days what's of that? your youth? Um, I'm going back to the heart of worship. That's that one. Good, Matt Redman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that God's one. not dead. He's surely alive. alive. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Classic, yeah. classic. So here's our Preach TV we roll out. It's got the mic clip on here. Emergency mic, water, and now the doorbell that rings to two lights back there. So we know that that TV is having issues. So that's, uh, we'll see how that works. Pro Presenter did have a couple of issues. Slide, design, and then the mouse just stopped working on one of the presentations. Just in that presentation. You could click everywhere else. So that's a little unnerving. When you're ready. All right, three, two, one. You're live. Well, good morning and welcome to Central Online. We are so glad that you're joining us today from wherever you're watching from. You're live. Second service worship went good. I'm here in my office watching, about to be listening to the sermon. Let me wrap up my thoughts on nostalgia. So how can we as worship leaders manage this tension well? People come with their own experiences and histories, and those shape how they experience and worship Jesus. Well, I don't advise that we pass out nostalgia puffers. That way people can just take a hit of it whenever they need it. If they're not feeling worship now, I think it's just uh, knowing your congregation, understanding the people you are leading, and then stretching their worship muscle like a rubber band, you know? So it has that tension. Tension is good. That's where power comes from. I think God grows us when we are under tension. But don't pull so hard you pop the rubber band. But let's be honest. The past is not as rosy and great as we sometimes remember it. You know, you go to your hometown, you drive around, Go look at your old baseball field and you're like, that seemed a lot bigger. Nostalgia has a way of doing that. So is nostalgia poisonous? I mean, just like anything else, it can be. But if you've navigated this at your church and you got some tips for us, let us know in the comments. Am I crazy, guys? Is this not something that we should even be worried about? I think it's a subtle part 
of knowing your people and knowing how to lead them well. Gonna go get ready for the final song. If you made it this far in the vlog, congratulations. Are you glad they're back? It's been a few months, but man, I'm excited to keep documenting the journey. That's what this channel is all about. Remember guys, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. See ya. I'll probably look back on this vlog in 10 years and be nostalgic. But I'm not stopping making videos. That's the key. Is nostalgia poisonous? It can be. Shut up. I can't do this. He's too cringy.